Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Furman Athletics. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. It is good to be back after an extended break, and uh, you know this guy sitting beside me. He is the head coach of the Furman football team. They are in the middle of spring practice right now. It is Clay Hendricks. Clay, how you doing? I'm doing well. Turn your, mic- with you. turn your microphone up a little bit. Um, I would imagine that uh, it's good to be back to work. It, it is. Uh, today, day, we're practicing today. Day's number six. You know, coming off a of spring break, I think the spring break came at a good time. Uh, and it was good for me. I imagine it's good for our players. And we'll see how we practice today. Uh, had them back early yesterday morning, did an early morning lift. Had our little pro day. Mm-hmm actually down in Columbia yesterday afternoon that went really well um, so we'll be uh, we're actually going we're actually going to practice the next three days um, today go a little lighter tomorrow Thursday and then Saturday have our our little junior I guess you can call it spring game football showcase whatever and we'll scrimmage out here on Saturday got a bunch of kids coming uh, so busy week and got great weather so best best week of weather I think we've had. Yeah, yeah, which uh, I know obviously that's that's what you're hoping for. Although I know s- coaches like to uh, not upset sometimes if it's a little too cold or maybe a little too hot to kind of push the players a little bit from time to time. So, yeah, well, you know, we said in December we 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 practiced in the cold, and you know, so we want to be playing in the cold in December. Yeah, so we practice in the winter, and then you know, and 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 I think I saw Saturday maybe 75 degrees. Nice. Uh, so there may be maybe a couple of guys huffing, puffing a little bit more <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> and that's just the coaching staff, right? That's just the coaching staff. <laughs> uh, the the schedule obviously is a bit skewed because you will still have, what, four or five practices after the the, uh, the, the purple-white day on Saturday, which we'll talk about in more detail coming up in, in just a bit. And, and I don't want to – belabor and spend all of our time on this, but be, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the loss of Bryce Stanfield. And that's, that necessitated obviously the changing of, of the schedule, but um, you and, and, and this team uh, not to mention, obviously Bryce's family have just been through the ringer uh, with this thing. So I know you get asked this all the time. Uh, I, I can ask it from a little bit of a, a different perspective than maybe some others can, but but how are you doing? How's the team doing uh, under the circumstances? I think everyone's doing well under the circumstances. You know, certainly been a challenging time. Uh, again, nothing prepares you for that. Um, really proud of our team. Really proud of everybody. You know, Furman, our university, our leadership. You know, Dr. Davis, Jason Donnelly. Uh, our student body have had a lot of maybe more interaction with, with students. Um, so I, you know, just, it, it is a no, no easy way about it. It was mm-hmm. just a tough time. And you just try to, you know, rely on people that you're close to rely on your faith. And, um, you know, and, and that's, that's, I think that's all, that's the only way I know how to get through tough times. Yeah. And, uh, but, but we're managing it well. Our players have managed it well. We've tried to continue to be conscious of that. I'm sure, Certain guys are affected differently than others. Um, but, you know, we had – we pushed really everything back a couple of weeks. I thought we had really five really good practices before we went on break. Uh, and, you know, Dan, where we were a year ago in the spring, we, we – um, you know, we were so thin in a couple of spots with healthy bodies. It, last spring, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, it was really just trying to get through the spring. Can we get better and get through the spring? Mm-hmm. Where this spring, you know, the focus is a little different. You know, we, we played a little more real football. We in five days, and I'm I'm serious about this. In five days, I think we tackled more in five days than we did in the two two springs previous. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll continue kind of continue that trend. Uh, you know, you try to stay healthy as you can, but you know, I think we've got some really talented young guys that just need to play, and that's the only way to only way to do it. I want to ask you one more question uh, about Bryce and, and, and that situation, and then we'll move on. But have you been through anything like that prior as, as a player or a coach? And, and then as the coach, when everybody's looking to you for leadership at a moment like this, how do you lead? Well, I have not. Um, you know, when I was a player here, um, we, we lost a player at the time was injured on a 
I think it was either late July, August, and it was it was really about the time before we were starting to play in a car accident. And I was probably a sophomore, or something here, but but just really never had. I think one of the things that I know helped me. I had, I had a incredible number of people that reached out. A lot of people I knew, mm-hmm. a lot of people I didn't know. Um, you know, and I just great words of encouragement. Um, you know, certainly the prayers, we felt the prayers. I mean, I, you know, we've had a lot of people praying for us, yeah. for me specifically. And mm-hmm. I, I'd say I felt that. Um, I, I don't know. You just got to. Um, uh, you know, and, and I was told a lot, you know, you're, you know, people are looking to you for leadership, your team, your university. Um, I, I don't know. I think we just tried to rely on the things that we believe in our program mm-hmm. and, you know, taking care of each other, loving one another. All those things have always been really important to us, how we treat others. And I think that probably helped us, you know, through this time. I, I think, uh, I think the closeness of our football team, um, uh, you know, I don't think we have any patent on, on that but i do think we have a really unusual group and and i'll, I'll tell you that dan because i've even heard that from some guys who aren't here anymore mm-hmm. you know that maybe went and did something else went to do a grad program and you know i'm interested to get their feedback sometimes and and that is probably the number one thing that they come back and say to me that's just different and i don't think they say it in a negative way but they just it's i've heard that word a lot it's just different and so i i, I think that has helped us and will continue to help us because you know this is going to be a you know it, it's a, it, you know it, it's a process it, it's going to be a process and uh you know we're going to continue to find ways to honor bryce and his family and um i, th- I think i think i think terry and fred are going to be here this weekend mm-hmm. uh so i think we'll continue to do that and uh, you know, nice little addition out there to the hill uh, that they added. Uh, I've even had somebody through back channels ask me about Ole Miss. It even mentioned something about they wanted to do something, you know, what and would I be against that? Uh, so, I, you know, we'll continue. You know, Bryce is a great guy, and I've told our team this. Man, if you're looking for somebody to emulate, you know, to put there and say, hey, I want to be like that guy, mm-hmm. you know, and – Cause he was just top notch in every, every, every way, uh, you know, whether it's on the field and school, you know, how he was and, you know, service opportunities that he took mm-hmm. advantage of, um, as a teammate, I didn't, you know, there, I, don't, I don't know if I could pick a better guy off of our team just to say, Hey, emulate him, you know, do it the way he did it. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I think those are, that's what I try to focus on and, uh, you know, and we'll continue with our team. Well, we, we continue to pray for Fred and Terry and, and the entire family and, and for you guys because your family too. And and I know that uh, it's not something that uh, you you deal with for a couple of weeks and it goes away. It's going to linger for a while. And, and you want the memory too. You, you, you want Absolutely. the memory too. Um, so um, uh, you, you mentioned a minute ago different, talking about how the first five – days of, of spring practice has been because you've been healthy and been able to tackle and do some things maybe you couldn't do the previous two years because of injuries. There's another big difference with this team. You had 41 players or whatever it was walk on senior day. So I, I know a handful of those have come back, but you, you've you got more turnover in your program this spring than you've had in, in two or three seasons. So that's different. How, how has the spring been different in that aspect well we lost a lot of experience um you know i I think when you look at our program you know we will continue to be we're we're the program that needs to recruit well i think we have Mm -hmm. you know we need to retain players i think we've done a good job of that and and then to develop them um you know i think we've got some really good talented young guys in our program have just kind of been waiting for their chance you know I think the years that we can we can certainly be an older football team, and that's who we play with. Certainly, we have a chance to have good football teams. Um, you know, we we lost, like I said, a lot of experience. Um, I think we played three three freshmen a year ago, or last fall. We we burned it burned a year of eligibility on three guys. I think we we burned a year on two guys the year before. So again, we haven't we haven't had to do that. Do we have some guys that probably, if we said we're going to play this guy, 
would he have played a lot? I think probably so. But we didn't think we felt like we had enough older guys that we didn't feel like we needed mm -hmm. to do that. And I think that's paid off for us mm -hmm. now. We've got some good competition at spots. Um, you know, I mean, we talk a lot about we want to, you know, you want to be out there with the ones. Or maybe, you know, accomplishment for you is to be out there with the twos. And sometimes maybe even if you're with the threes, you know, that's kind of where you are based on where we are competition-wise. So uh, never had three quarterbacks here that I remember on scholarship here in in the spring that you felt really good about. So that's been fun to watch that that little competition going. Um, so, I, you know, it, it, I don't know, it kind of rejuvenates you in some ways. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I remember last year just trying to hold your breath and get through the spring. And I think our focus is just a little bit different, you know, because, I mean, we're always trying to develop players. But, um, you know, good competition – um, you know, and, you know, knock on wood, here it is, what, March the 12th and staff, you know, pretty much intact, you know, which I think anything, the continuity helps. Um, you know, we, we've made a few adjustments on both sides of the ball schematically, mm -hmm. a few, few little position adjustments, but but it's just, you know, we'll, come, we'll go out there today and we'll, we'll go after it pretty good today and let's see if we can get a little better. It, it's an interesting mix to me because – all of that turnover, all those veteran guys are gone, and yet you still have what's the number fourteen or fifteen guys combined on both sides of the ball that have starting experience. So it's not like you're devoid of experienced football players heading into a new season. Well, I agree, especially <clears throat> defensively, you know, because that's really that's that's how we play. Probably don't play as many guys on offense. You know, I think we've got ninety-one guys on our roster. You know, we had record numbers on our roster. Uh, you know, we signed. I think we signed 17 guys. Uh, one of those guys, you know, Trey's already here. Mm -hmm. So 16 guys. There'll be some other guys we'll try to add. So I think our roster numbers will still be – I'm not sure we can keep up that number. Just, you know, we were living with a lot of guys for the extra years, and those guys were finally kind of kind of gone. But uh, I think our roster numbers have helped us. Our scout teams have been better. Uh, helps the development of our team. helps the development of the young guys. Uh, but again, you know, you, you want competition, you want them, you know, you try to make them as uncomfortable as you can, because that's the only way you really grow is by being uncomfortable and put them in tough spots. And, and again, been really pleased with how they've responded, what they've done with Andre in the weight room. And, you know, that's one reason I want to, we're going to push this thing. Cause I'd like to have a good window. Our window at the end of the spring won't be as big now because, you know, we pushed everything back. But that window in the weight room where it's all Andre, um, you know, before they're gone, because most of our guys are gone in May mm -hmm. before we get them back. You've been a big June. believer in that since you came in doing spring early so you can have that dedicated that weight room time. Well, yeah, it's recovery. You know, when, when you have some guys, uh, you know, we've already dealt with an injury or two. But, but, you know, when you have some injuries, you have a little more time to recover. But I think, I think that time is so much more important for us. You know, and again, as a developmental program. Um, and again, I just think that's how we have to do it here. Inside Furman Athletics with head coach Clay Hendricks. Uh, next week, if all goes according to plan, Jason Donnelly will be sitting here. And uh, you know, I think he'll find something to talk about for uh, for 35 minutes or so. But um, you, you mentioned the first time you can recall having three scholarship quarterbacks here in the spring, um, Tyler Huff did so much for you in the two years that he was here. He's moved on. Is it fair to say that just from an experience and being here standpoint that it's Carson's job to lose, or do you go into this saying, hey, this competition is wide open? Well, I think it's wide open. I mean, as, as we say, you know, when we go out there today, when we go, somebody's going to be with the ones. Mm -hmm. and, and we try to do that based on how you practice the day before. Um, and so, I, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, Carson hadn't played a ton but he played some really meaningful, you know, snaps has played really well, mm -hmm. you know, at times. And I mean, we're, we're a conference champion because of the job Carson did. Um, so yeah, I think absolutely. I think, you know, and, and it should be that way. You want your older guys, particularly older guys with talent. They should be the best guys out there. Uh, just, just from an experience standpoint. So, um, but, but, you know, the other guys is, is fun to kind of watch them, watch them get in there and compete a little bit and, and again, being able to put them in a situation where it's really, can you go move the offense? 
against a really good defense, mm -hmm. you know, that they see every day at practice and that challenges them both, you know, schematically, they do some things that, that create some issues. And, uh, but now again, I, I, I think it's made it a little more fun spring just because of that. What <clears throat> positions are you looking at right now that you would say might be your top one or two of concern that you really need to get addressed before August 31st? Well, you know, we're, we're thin at corner right now. Um, you know, Charles Ingram was a guy that that had, you know, we made the decision and really ended up, you, you, you second guess, but I don't say this one worked out for us. We we went ahead and made the decision. At one time we thought we may let him practice some and then get a shoulder fixed. We said, no, let's go ahead and just recovery. And then, and then things got pushed back, which will set it back even more. Um, so he's not going through spring. So he was a guy you're kind of, Felt like really had a chance in the mix, and he he should be back full go, but he's not out there this spring. Um, there's some really talented, some young talented guys out there at corner, so it, it's kind of interesting to watch them, um, uh, you know, day by day. Probably, probably a little bit just there in depth, and then we we signed a really good group. Um, you know, I think the offensive line group just because you know we lost some guys that played forever up there. Um, but again, it, it's it's fun, you know, Chris Luna's a guy that we redshirted a year ago. And, you know, Chris is – he's like all of them. He still has a long ways to go. But I've just really been pleased with where he was in the fall. You know, I think we – I think he – I think he was on every trip with us. We prepared him every week but did not have to burn a year on him. You know, jumping in there at the center position. Uh, I, I think probably offensive line. Just – just it, it's a position that takes a little more time. Mm -hmm. um, signed a good group. Um, I think those two probably were the two positions, you know, that – did I just say on paper? Yeah, you felt like okay. You know the the defensive line group. You lost a number of guys there, but that that's a I think it's a pretty talented group. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been 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 fun to kind of watch them. And you know, I think somebody told me. You know, you look at the number of sacks we had. I think we still returned two thirds of our sacks, or close to over half of our sacks from a year ago returning. So, um, you know. But, but I think, you know, probably that – probably just the corner group and then the offensive line. It, it brings up a point because you have been, when, when possible, a promote from within guy. And, and Dwayne Vaughn has been here as long as I have. We came the same year, so he, he just wrapped up his 13th year in this program. You promoted him to defensive coordinator, what, five years ago, whatever the number is. What, what have you seen in his growth – as a coordinator on that side of the way, you had to see something in him to give him the opportunity. Yeah. And I would imagine you're pleased with what you've seen since he took that job. Yeah. You know, Dwayne's an interesting guy. You know, he, he's a Vanderbilt grad, but he's an incredibly bright guy. Well, you, you have you to know, be to be a Vanderbilt when, grad, when, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we want those kinds of guys in our park. I think coaching here is kind of like going to school here. You need to, you need to understand you know who you're who you're dealing with, mm -hmm. who you who you can recruit. Um, so he's a really good fit here. And you know, when I came back and got the job, you know, he was a guy that maybe I'd met once, uh, but I just heard so many good things about him. Um, you know, Bruce Fowler, who's a good friend of mine. Bruce really thought a lot of him. Um, you know, he'd done a number of jobs, and then you know, had a chance to keep him on staff. And then, you know, when that, when that coordinator job came open, uh, he wanted the job. Um, you know, my, I th I'll be honest, I think my first thought was, you know, you know, I'd spent most of my career on offense, well, all of my career on offense. And, um, you know, do you go maybe hire somebody who has done it? Mm -hmm. You know, there's something certainly to be said for that in certain areas, but you know, the more you talk to him, he had a plan, um, uh, Again, really bright. Um, I, you know, it's been fun to watch Dwayne grow and mature. You know, really has and has done a phenomenal job. You know, and and, and incredibly loyal. Mm -hmm. He's been really loyal to me. He's been really loyal to Furman. Uh, he's had a lot of opportunities to leave. I think Dwayne sees the big picture. Um, you know, I think, you know, I don't know. I think he and I kind of see things similar as far as what's important to you. Uh, doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're going to look at opportunities. Um, but, and then I think as we've added staff, he, you know, incredibly organized, 
uh, intense, but I think just for him, just maturity and watching him grow and, you know, Christy, his wife, she's, she's been great been fun to watch that couple kind of, mm -hmm. kind of grow. And, um, you know, we got a, we got a really good staff over there and you look at those guys, you kind of, you know, what Kevin Lewis brought and what Tommy Spangler and then Chad was a guy he had worked with here before and to find main. So what, what he's brought in get another guy played at Richmond. You know, I, I just think that that's such a huge part of what we, what we do here. Um, but again, Dwayne, man, the great, the great, great job he did and has done mm -hmm. the whole time. They continue to get better. And, um, I think we have a chance to be really good again. Over right. There. Well, and, and you talk about coaches having to know what it takes to be successful at this school with everything that goes along with being a student athlete at Furman that had to factor in two years ago when you brought Justin Roper in here. And obviously he's been a really, really good fit on the offensive side as a coordinator. Well, same way you can look at that side with Justin, because Justin's probably one of the few times when I, since I've been here, when, when, when we had the open position, where I just truly said, okay, uh, I, you know, people say I'm going to do a national search. Most people won't do a national search. I literally was going to look around and he'd been Holy Cross. They had done a really good job there. Um, uh, didn't know him, looked him up. And then, you know, he and I grew up an hour from each other and, and, you know, just sort of connecting the dots and, and what he did, what he's brought to the program. And then, you know, and then I think you add Matt McCutcheon, what he had done, you know, it, 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 with our offensive line, um, you know, Drew Duds that came in there when Brian right. went to the Coles, and and you know, I mean, and uh, Nick Verna made that transition to tight end. What he's done with Golly, with uh, Brian Miller, and yeah, now Mason, and um, and then Corey Calder even coming in, you know, a year ago as a running back coach, and and so I, I don't know, I. I'm 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 really blessed in that regard. Yeah, but uh, you're the guy who has to put the puzzle pieces together. Well, you know, and I think, and, and, what, and then unfortunately sometimes decide when one doesn't fit. <laughs> well, I haven't had to do that. You know, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm 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 I take a little pride in that. Yeah. Um, that 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 I hadn't, and um, you know, it is. And I think places like here, you know, you got to make the puzzle fit. Mm -hmm. You know, you have resources. You're looking for fits. Um, you know, you certainly love having promotable type guys. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, got, I got a few things that I always try to follow, you know, guidelines. And then sometimes you have to, you have to say, you know, and then you get lots of suggestions, mm -hmm. both from outside, even, even from inside. I think you listen to people. Uh, and I, I think it, the other thing is learning or, or, or getting your staff to point where they understand that too. Right. So when they start bringing up names for you, they're like, ah, coach, I don't, I don't think that's a fit, you know? And, um, so I think we're, I, I tell our team this, I said, you know, our, we're as a staff, we're on the same page, you know? So don't think we're not on the same page. You know, we're making, we talk about, we, there's times more times than you think we go down every single name on the board and where is he? Give me your thoughts. And, we even did it after about, you know, four or five days of practice and we'll, we'll continue, continue to do that. But, you know, they're a fun group to come to work. Um, uh, and you know, it's always fun when you're winning, uh, but they're, they're a pretty fun group to be around even when, when things don't go your way. Do you, you have know, your, do you, I'm sorry. Do you have your offensive staff sometimes evaluate your defensive players and vice versa? Well, I think what we do is we, we try to watch enough tape together. So, you know, the guys understand, what the other side's looking for. Right. You know, and, you know, a great example, I think I told our, our, we were talking about the pro day yesterday and, you know, you look at some of these guys and, you know, Jake Johanning, <laughs> Jay, you know, I've been an offensive line guy my whole career. Hey, he's a good player as we've ever had in my opinion mm -hmm. as ever. And I don't think he had another offer. He came from St. Joe's over here. Travis Black's here, you know, Arguably as good a career as a corner as about anybody we ever had here. I think he had maybe one offer. He had an HBC offer. You know, he was a slot back in a double in a double slot offense. Um, uh, and you know, we were, you know, and Dwayne, we've talked about we've tried to project like the guys like that to corner because mm -hmm. sometimes the corners everybody sees them, you know, you've got to project a little bit. I, you take about Mason Pline. I, I was telling Nick Vernon, Nick Vernon found Mason Pline, and I know Mason's a big guy, but I think Mason had like one other offer. We went in as a grad, you know, transfer. 
Um, and I, you know, so I think it goes back again to evaluation, trusting your process, make your own evaluations. You know, we all ask who else is recruiting him because you need to know who your competition is, but, but I don't think you make decisions based solely right. on that. So, but again, it's understanding, you know, what the other side's looking for, you know, and then not get, you know, you got a guy in the air and you like him, but the guy that's going to coach him doesn't like him as well. Well, you gotta, you gotta let that, you know, you gotta let, you know, if you don't want to coach him, then, uh, and we've all been wrong, mm -hmm. you know, a number of times, but, but I think we've been right quite a bit. And again, getting those guys in who buy into our place, they buy into the, our education, they buy into the challenges, you know, along, you know, but they buy into the culture and there's still a lot of kids out there in the crazy world we live in that they value those things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why for firm and certainly a great option. I mean, somebody tell me the other day, Nick Saban, one of his most recent interviews, somebody asked him and he said, I got tired of, you know, a lot of things are going on in our world now, but he just got tired of being asked how much are you going to pay me? And am I going to start or how much I going to play? So that's the only two questions I ever got anymore. Yeah. You know, and you know, I haven't been asked that very often. So, and I, you know, <laughs> I hope I can finish my career not getting asked that, you know, again, it is a world we're in, but it, it, it's a different time. As we come down the stretch here, uh, we're recording this and dropping it on Tuesday, the uh, purple white scrimmage day, de facto spring game, whatever terminology you want to use is at 1 PM on Saturday the 16th this week here in Paladin Stadium. Gates will open at 1130 and you'll have a lot of the the fan-oriented stuff that goes along with that. But for the fans who come here, what are they going to see? Well, uh, probably a little different. We'll have officials here. Uh, we will we, we will do a bunch of 11-on-11. You know, we won't be a game format. Uh, we've got a little bit of a tentative plan. Certainly more different or different than what we've done the last couple of years because we feel like we can – you know, we have enough guys that we can go uh, do that. But I, I hope you'll just see a bunch of tackle football, you know, real <laughs> football. And you may find out who can who can move the ball. You shouldn't have a chance to see all of them get a chance to get in there. Um, we're going to kind of block segment. We're trying to get maybe 30, 35 snap blocks. We'll kind of keep a little bit of a pitch count, maybe mix a few special teams. Mm -hmm. And I think largely that will be gives the boss a little bit of time to go you know, scrimmage the amount of time that we want to scrimmage, but we'll, we'll start and you're know, supposed to have great weather should have a great group. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've, we've had fun having those golly. I think this morning we have 170 prospects signed up to come. That's wow. not counting who's with them. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them down there on the field and let them come so, around. So try Clay to Moss has been busy. Him. He has been busy. <laughs> uh, and it, it's kind of, there's lots of things busy, you know, and, 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 and I'm going to go ahead and cover this. Uh, it's one of these things that people talk about, you know, one of the things you get to learn about as a head coach. And I brought this up to our staff this morning. Uh, you know, it may be the black white team out there on Saturday uh, because we had 40 some odd purple jerseys that we, we got framed for our seniors <laughs> and the other ones aren't in yet. So, you know, there's things that you have to try to figure out. Right, now, what if we got enough of a set that we can put guys in? Yeah. It's not basketball. You can't go shirts and skins. No, no <laughs> doubt. So, so it may be the black white team. We may put the, pur the quarterbacks in purple or something, but, <laughs> but it's just another one of those things that you think about and you're like, okay, I hadn't thought about this. We you know? came to see purple and white. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, 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 exactly. But that's a, you know, that's a, a unique problem to have, but it's it's a good problem to have to be to have to frame that many that many jerseys. Um, final thing, uh, after all of this is done, you've got the off season, uh, the off time. There's not really an off season, but August 31st will be here before you know it. Twelve game season this fall as as the calendar falls. You open up at Ole Miss. What will the what will the the plan for post spring practice be? for your program leading into preparation for the season opener? Well, we'll, uh, we finished the spring. We'll go full, full scale in with Andre. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're going. That's a scary in. thought, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I hope we can get about four weeks. I don't know if we'll have quite that much time. We'll go right up until the week of finals. At that point in time, we shut that down and let them, let them <clears> focus <throat> on that. Uh, you know, with the main master we have here really, we don't have anybody. We may have a few guys here that are doing internships, but most of them are gone the month of May. I think report day this year for our 
incoming guys is, is uh, for the summer session. You know, we we generally can have them here for one session of summer school. So I think June first is a Saturday is generally when our our freshmen show up, and then the other guys. I think we start. I think first session starts the third. Some guys will be in class. Some guys won't be in class, but we should have all of them here. Mm-hmm. And uh, for about five weeks, uh, I don't know, maybe through the week of the fourth. And then most of our guys have about a three week window where they're back home. And I actually think it's pretty good. You know, they go home, they still have to train. It's not quite Bernardi training, <laughs> uh, but they still have to train. And then I think I should know this. I think July the 30th is maybe our report day. I think the 31st is the first day we can practice. And then we obviously play on August 31st. Right. You know, and then I think we start school a little bit later. So we'll have a little bit more of a camp mode, you know, time there. Uh, you know, as we get ready to go play, ooh, awful, awfully tough challenge. Uh, you know, the, those games are always tough. This group is they're, – they're, they're, they're a pretty talented group. And I think they won the – I think somebody told me they won the portal sweepstakes this summer with a – you know, with – just, uh, just what you needed to hear, right? Yeah, yeah, nil <laughs> and everything else. So they'll, you know, there'll be enough time to worry about that when yeah. the time comes. We got, you know, a couple of tough, really tough road trips. We go there, then we go to Williamsburg, mm-hmm. two of our longer, longer trips. I think that's maybe game four, right? Um, but you know, twelve. We got six home games. We don't get that very often. I don't, you know, it's been we don't get that very often around here. But uh, you know, a lot, a lot of work to do now and then. But um, yeah, you know, I, I really like this group. They've they've been really good and have good leadership. And and again, you, you know, we 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 did lose a bunch of guys, but we have a bunch of experienced guys back. And right. Maybe they weren't always the the first one to go out there to be with the ones, but a lot of them are playing probably half the time. Yeah. Uh, but that you know, and our coaches will have some time off in there, and um, I think we have a pretty good calendar way that we do things even for our guys to you know our coaches can be they can still be husbands and dads and um you know try to keep those guys as fresh for because you know once it starts you know once it starts in uh first august now it's on yeah you know we hope we're playing well well into december so uh, that was a fun that was a fun little fun little run i wish we could have stayed a little healthier there at the end of the year um, but you know, we're the, you know, we're the sport. I, I was looking the other day, I think, is there another team sport in all the NCAA that doesn't have a conference tournament, you know, so you got to get it done in the regular season. That's why those games are so important. You know, you can't, you know, we're not playing again in two days or we're not playing a double header today. Mm-hmm. We don't have a conference tournament. So there, there's not a chance, you know, you watched that group last night, what were they seventh seed? And, they had a chance to almost pull that thing off. Right. And, you know, you do that and you finish seventh in our league, you're, you've been at home for a while. You yes. know, there's not another option. So right. you've got to make the most of your, certainly the regular season, getting ready for that conference schedule. And, um, again, that, that's what makes our place a little, you know, our sport a little unique. But that's that's a good thing, too. Yeah, ETSU is trying to do something that hasn't been done in the Southern Conference since 1939. I saw that. And that's when four games in four days to to win the championship. Yeah, football, you don't get that opportunity. You don't do it in the regular season. Hey, and did you see, I saw that they said Clemson that year declined the bid because they were starting spring football practice. It, that's even, keep, even in 1939, in 1939 <laughs> what can, were their priorities, can you, right? Can you imagine that? Yeah. I, I, I see you as we're talking about this, even through the difficulty when we start talking on the field, I can, uh, what's happening with actual nuts and bolts of coaching. I can still see the joy in your face. You still enjoy this, don't you? I do. I mean, we have, uh, I mean, we have a great group of kids I mean, we have, uh, I, I think we talked about the challenges of the last six weeks, you know, it just makes it even that much more evident. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we got we got a couple of knuckleheads every now and then, but that's okay too. You need yeah. you need a few of those guys, but <laughs> but man, they they're fun. And the st- you talked about the staff, man. Just what a blessing it's been for me to have a chance to be the head coach here and be around those be around those guys. I still enjoy coming to work. Um, you know, I still like competing. You know, we'll come out there. We'll go out there and compete at practice. And uh, I think our guys have good perspective. I think the other thing that helps you, you, your perspective changes a little bit. I don't mm-hmm. think my perspective's been out of whack. 
but uh, you know, you want you want guys that will go compete like crazy when it's time to compete. Yeah, you know, and then we 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 get days when we got guys mad at each other, but let's leave it on the field and and we'll come back out here, you know, the next time and go compete again and just like a family. Well, and that that's how it is. It 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 really is, and you're gonna stick together through th- thick and thin. And uh, but no, they've been a they've been a fun group. It'll, I'm I'm excited about going back to practice today. Like I said, we we hadn't been since. I guess Thursday before spring break. So uh, we'll go out there and get some good work in. All right. Sounds good. Coach, thank you so much. That is uh, Clay Hendricks joining us uh, on the return of Inside Furman Athletics. We will be back again next week. And if all goes according to plan, Athletics Director Jason Donnelly will be our guest. For Coach Hendricks, I'm Dan Scott. God bless you. So long, everybody.